everybody. I'm gonna take a road trip. So, uh, unlike uh, Joey Ricard, I'll take you a ride in his Porsche. I'm taking you a ride in my 1989 Toyota Land Cruiser uh, and the air conditioner compressor gave out a couple weeks ago and I haven't had it replaced yet so uh, that's why the windows are down a little bit and uh, it's a little <laughs> it'll be a little wind noise sorry about that we're just going to take a little road trip up to the uh, local park because we're going to talk about cattails and how to model cattails in this uh, video so hopefully you enjoy the ride and uh, I'll turn it off now until we get back to the all right i'm in the park i didn't even have to go to the pond <laughs> there's a little marshy area on the entrance to the pond so i got cattails right behind me so as you can tell they're taller than me um i googled it, it says that you know they can go six to eight feet tall um a lot of times that uh and they're not not very wide yeah as you can tell they're you know you know, maybe half inch, three quarter inch wide. But one thing I want you to notice is they sort of grow in clumps. Like this is one right here. And it's got, you know, five or six stuff. And not every one has the, this one. And that looks like it may be about, you know, eight inches, you know, 10 inches. So an end scale, you know, one, one sixtieth of eight inches is uh, not much. <laughs> so I've got a, Hornet flying around me, so <laughs> he didn't. He didn't appreciate me. I was going to delete that part about the hornet. He didn't get me. Uh, I'll show you a picture of him right here. Luckily for me, he attacked the camera and I had the camera on a, like a, it wasn't really a selfie stick. It's what I used to attach the camera to my Land Cruiser. Uh, but when I showed it to my wife, she thought it was kind of funny and said I should leave it in anyhow. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it in and uh, hopefully get a big laugh out of it. Um, these are maybe eight to 10 inches. So an end scale, that's not much. Uh, again, the stalks are very, very thin. What I want you to notice is the color and also that they grow in clumps. So, you know, there's like five, six, seven, eight to one, and they pretty much stand straight up. What I mean is at the base, they're growing straight up. Uh, when they get tall, they'll lean a little bit, but you'll never, this whole clump, you never see one at the bottom leaning pretty much. So that's sort of the challenge in end scale. You can see some out in the middle there. They're probably 10 foot tall, 12 foot tall. They're, they're way up there. So now that we uh, know what we need to model, let's take a look how I'm going to model them. All right, so this is what I've uh, come up with. Not done yet, uh, but I've got about 21 or 22 individual clumps of cattails in here. And I have to thank Highballing Hogger for the suggestion. This is stranded wire. So I'm going to show you now how I make a couple of them. It's easier, well, it's easier to make a bunch of them than it is one. But, uh, so let's uh, go through the process real quick, show you how I made these. This is a piece of wire I found in my scrap box. It's probably 14 gauge, maybe 16 gauge, has seven strands in it. I cut off a couple inches and then stripped a little bit off each end. It's about six scale feet in end scale, but don't worry about it. Figure out how far you want the cattails to be or how tall and do that. You want them to be a little bit uh, random, not uniform. Take your X-Acto knife and spread out the strands. You want them to be far apart so when you paint them, you can get paint on all the sides of them. This is important. Take your rail nippers or wire cutters and just cut a few of them off very randomly. Cattails are not all the same height. They leave a couple full length, two or three, but then cut some of the strands off at different lengths. It'll make them look a lot better. 
This is just some paint I had in the garage. I painted uh, them first with the matte Spanish moss, the darker green. Then I oversprayed with the lighter green, which is more of a, like a yellow green. Don't know if I really need to do that. One color would probably be okay, uh, but it worked pretty well. I did not let the matte green dry. I just did it all wet on wet. This is what it looks like after they're painted. You have to rotate the uh, pliers around so you get full coverage everywhere. Uh, this is just an old pair of needle nose pliers I literally found in the street, so they're good for this kind of stuff. They're not good for much of anything else. Uh, you just want to, after this, you just let them dry for a while. Don't put them back together because you don't want the strands to stick together. You want them to be individual strands. Okay, if you want to get really fancy, you can try to take some, uh, I've got some earth paint or brown paint and try to add the actual cattail or, you know, whatever you want to call that to it. As you can see, I'm pointing at it right here, but it's in scale. You can't see it. If you want to, you knock yourself out. Half the ones on the layout that I showed you the picture of at the beginning have that on it. So I'm not bothering with it anymore. It's just not worth it. You can't see it uh, unless you just really focus in. So this is what it looks like when you push them back together. Again, you want to be straight uh, as possible, not bent, unless maybe the very tips. All right, now just take your drill with a bit just a little bit bigger than the wire. Pick out where you want the uh, cattail and drill a hole. I usually drill a bunch of them at once. Um, so I'm just, I already had one drilled, so now I know where to. Then you can just either blow away the stuff, or you can suck it <laughs> with, with your vacuum cleaner. If you want to, you can take some white glue, dip there, and then put the uh, cattail in. I usually don't use those to put it in because it's uh, sort of harder to let go. But let's see, I, don't, I put my. So you just sit it down in there, let it go. And then I'll take an X-Acto knife and just push it down into place. That's how you do it. So it's really not uh, that hard when you do a bunch of them at once. So there you have it. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, it's really not that bad when you make a whole bunch of them at once. Uh, and you can go, while you're waiting on the paint to dry, you can go work on other stuff. So, uh, I'm, uh, you know, satisfied with it. I'm not going to make 200 more and go around the whole edge of the, <laughs> the swamp, though. Uh, it is, you know, fairly, uh, I guess, labor-intensive or whatever. I do want to talk about uh, something else while I'm here. I don't know if you can see in the background. Uh, so, back here... When I shot video this way, you would really see this brown patch of wall. So I just took a picture of the backdrop in a couple of places and tried to sort of blend it in uh, there. It's not perfect, but I'm not going to buy a $50 backdrop to patch six inches of uh, wall. Um, I tried to match up the hill the best that I could. Now, I'm, I added a piece of foam here, which was not here before. It's just an extension out. I'm not going to be a track or anything on it, but I'll put some, uh, maybe a little hill and some trees sort of blend us back from the uh, brickyard. And so it'll cover this, most of this part in here that doesn't uh, match real well. But I think when I'm shooting video, you know, this way, uh, it'll be a lot less noticeable. So just another little thing I did um, to you know make the videos a little bit better hope everybody enjoyed this it was a fun little project they're not hard to do you know encourage you to do it if, if you have a swamp uh you know you, you don't see cattails in running water that's always in you know ponds something like that but uh so if you have a stream really probably not don't need cattails but if you have a little pond lake marsh something like that makes a good addition everybody stay safe